Hey everyone, Brian Lagunas here, and today I'm going to answer another tech question. If you have a tech question you'd like to have answered, make sure you subscribe to my channel, like this video, leave a comment below with your question, and I may just answer it in my next video. Today's question comes from Joaquin Carlson, and his question is actually pretty straightforward. He basically asks, Brian, I would love an explanation on yield return. And this is actually a really great question. I think the yield keyword is a highly misunderstood keyword in .NET and C Sharp. Uh, and so I will try my best to explain it to where hopefully we can kind of understand it and see where we would want to use it uh, and maybe to help improve performance in our applications. Well, let's get right to it. So the application we're working with today is a very simple .NET console application. And before we really get into what yield is and where we would use it and all that, let's first take a look at how we normally write code. You know, this is the code that you're most commonly going to see. Uh, in our main method, we have a method called uh, process people. And if we look at process people, we'll see that it's pretty basic. Uh, we call this method called get people. Uh, we loop through those people. And looks like we're checking the ID. Uh, if it's less than a thousand, we're gonna console write line. Otherwise, we're gonna break out. So we're looping through all these people and we're only gonna take the first thousand of them, it appears, right? And so if you look at this get people, we're passing in, what's this, uh, one million? So we're, we're passing in the number one million. Actually, to make this easier to read, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna use that little shortcut there, right? To help me visualize that that's a million. So we're passing in the, the number a million. And what this method does, this is, this is very common, right? Uh, what we do is we, we create a list because we, we want to hold this list of people that we're creating, right? So we're gonna loop through this count and for each one, we're going to add a new person, right? We're gonna create a new person, we're gonna add it to our list, and then we're going to return this list. And this is a very, very uh, common way to return a collection of items from a method, right? We create some type of uh, temporary list or temporary collection, and then we return it uh, from the method. And sometimes that's all that method does. And, and it's, it's pretty straightforward. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna run this as it is. And all it did was it, you know, went through uh, the first thousand people. And then when we got to our thousandth person, we stopped, right? We broke out of the, the for each loop and the, the application is over. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to like we, we want to step in and see what's really going on here. What, what, do, what are we really doing when we call this this get people method? OK, so I'm going to start here. I'm going to put a breakpoint there and there and let, let's run this again. And so we enter this part, this process people method. OK, the first line we get to is get people. We're going to get a million of them. So we're going to step back into this method. We're going to create our people list and then we're going to loop through each one of those. Uh, for each count, each number, and whatever count we throw in there, we're going to add a new person to the list. So no matter what, we're going to loop through and create a million people uh, and return that collection, no matter what, right? So when we get to the people, we can hover over this and see that we, we sure do. We, we have a count of a million, okay? And so that is a completely populated object and now no matter how many people we actually wind up looping through, uh, no matter what, we've already created a million people, right? No matter what, we have created a million people. And so this is where the yield return uh, keyword kind of comes into play, okay? What we wanna do is we want to prevent us from actually creating all million records, adding it to a list and returning that list fully hydrated with a million records. Instead, would it be great if we could just only return what we want, okay? So I'm gonna modify uh, this method here, get people. I'm actually going to delete this list. Uh, we're not gonna be returning there. Uh, we don't have a list to add to anymore. Instead, we're going to uh, say yield return new person, okay? So we fix that. Uh, and now let, let's step through this again and kind of see what happens. What, what's going on here? Okay, so I'm going to put a, a breakpoint on this get people. And let's go ahead and run the application. So our first line is get people. We're asking for a million of them. Uh, whoa, well, that's weird. We actually didn't get into the get people method, did we? We, we never hit this method. We went straight to the for each. And if I hover over the people, I can see that we actually don't have a count at all. 
well, that's very strange. Well, what's going on? Well, let, let's keep going, right? Let's keep going and, and see what's happening. So now we're going to slowly come into this for each statement. And so for each person and people, right? We're in the in statement now. We're highlighted on in. Now we get people, right? And now we're going to come through here and we're going to return a person in this ID. Uh, what's this ID going to be right here? Zero. Okay, now we have a person. Okay, now we're going to come through here, check the ID, console right line, and we're going to keep stepping through. We're in again, and now we're going through one at a time. But let's hit that breakpoint here. Okay, so now I'm going to come back, and I'm back in in. Did you see what happened? We went from in, and now we're inside this loop again. We didn't hit the outside code block for the get people method, right? We hit that once, but we haven't hit it again. Instead, we're still inside this loop. Right, so I'm going to yield return another person. We have that person. We're in the in statement again right here, that in keyword. Boom, we're back into the loop. So what we're doing is we're essentially lazily iterating over this collection here. We're only requesting one person at a time. Okay, so as we go through here, each for each loop for each iteration we're going to come into this method it's going to remember where we left off and it's only going to return that that person that we're requesting at that time okay so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to remove all my breakpoints and then it's going to work the same way right we get the same experience except we made a huge change that basically will help improve performance and memory usage and we're going to see that in a minute uh, bef before I show you our benchmarks, uh, I'll, I kind of want to discuss what, what's what, what's kind of going on here. When we use the yield statement, what are we really doing? Well, we're, we're, we're basically creating an iterator. OK, we, we are creating an iterator. And if you don't know what an iterator is, you're, you're, you use them. You just probably don't realize it. So, for example, I'm just going to write some some pseudo code up here. Uh, I'll say var test equals uh, get people we will pass in. Doesn't matter how many. And then we're going to say get enumerator, right? So each collection is going to have what's called an enumerator. And the enumerator is responsible for iterating over the collection. So if I come into uh, this definition here by hitting F12, we can see that it returns an enumerator that iterates through the collection, okay? So essentially what a for each statement does, it's, it's syntactical sugar over something like, you know, while test dot move next, uh, we're going to, you know, var item equals test dot current. Uh, that's, that's essentially what a for each is doing this. A for each is just syntactical sugar uh, over something like this. This is kind of what it compiles down to roughly. Okay. Uh, so this is all syntactical sugar on top of, uh, the dot net underlying uh, workings. Okay. And so by not having to iterate over the entire collection or create an entire collection, we didn't have to actually create a million people, a list with a million people in it, did we? No. What wound up happening is we actually looped through and only created the first thousand, right? We only iterated and created a thousand people because using yield, when we came into this, this loop, right, we only requested the person creation one at a time as we needed it. And the second that we got over that thousand, we broke out of the full reach and we were not requesting anymore. Now, let's look at some benchmarks. I've created a couple of benchmarks here, and this is going to show you the time and memory uh, impact that doing it the old way, which is just process people. It's the same method. I didn't change anything. Uh, and then we have the process people yield. This is the yield approach where we are using the yield return result. OK, same method, same everything, uh, but we're going to benchmark and measure these. Uh, so in order to do this, I just I'm going to comment out our test code here. And I have to put something like var summary uh, equals, what is it? Like, I think it was benchmark runner. Yeah, benchmark runner dot run. Uh, and then the name of my class, which is uh, yield benchmarks. Because I'm using benchmark.net. And this is what I'm using to uh, benchmark all of our, uh, our usage on our methods. So I have a memory diagnoser and I marked each of these methods as a benchmark. Uh, in order to do this, I have to run this uh, as release. And let's go at control F5 and let's run these benchmarks and see what the difference is to our applications when we use the old create a list, create everything and give it back to you 
versus, you know what? I'm going to create a, uh, a yield iterator method, right? It's a method that's, it's an iterator. That's, that's all it is. So this is going to take just a moment to, uh, to complete. I mean, we are creating a million records uh, in one of the tests multiple, multiple, multiple times. So this benchmark actually runs your methods multiple times in order to get proper results. And it looks like it ran it 15 times. So it's going to run each one 15 times. Okay, so now that this is done, let's look at the results. The process people method, this is using the old school, create a list, create everything, put it in the list, and then return it. That took 314 milliseconds versus the process people yield where we're only requesting what we want when we want it, 79.51 milliseconds. But also look at the memory usage we have here, right? That is a massive, massive difference in memory. Basically, uh, we'll call it 118 megabytes versus 186 kilobytes. That is huge, right? That is huge. Now, it's important to realize that what's going on here, when, when you use the yield, right? When we're using this, we're creating uh, essentially a custom iterator. And if you don't know what a custom iterator is, it's a class that implements uh, I enumerator and you have various methods you have to implement, such as the current, uh, such as move next and things like that. Uh, when this compiles down, it actually creates that class for you automatically. Uh, so this, like I said, it's syntactical sugar. It, it makes things a lot easier for you. Now, what's also cool, if we kind of go back, no, we'll stay in here. Uh, you can use yield as properties as well. So if you had a, a property, like, uh, I don't know, I enumerable of int, right? We'll just call it my property. And we'll have a just a getter here. Uh, we can, you know, return, no, just, we can yield return, you know, zero. We can yield return one, two, three, four, right? So we can use yield return not only in a method, but you can use it in properties as well. Uh, very, very handy. Though I, I don't do this personally very often because this really won't buy you too much, but it's possible. It's something you can do. So when you go to ask yourself, Brian, when would I really use the yield keyword? Well, really you're gonna use it with like large collections. This is very beneficial for very large collections. Any collections that uh, maybe have an infinite length, like you don't know when it's gonna end. Uh, when you're dealing with streams, I know a lot of IoT developers use yield because they're feeding streams of data from the IoT device to the, uh, to the uh, client side application, right? The application that's reading data from that IoT device. Uh, or when you're doing uh, calculations with unknown results, uh, yield is very handy. And so, you know, when you go to look, look at using yield, I would always recommend, you know, benchmarking your code and seeing if it's necessary. Because for example, what happens if we take this down to, I don't know, a thousand, how much does it really buy us? Let's look, right? Let's look, what, what do we buy ourselves when we just are only doing a thousand. Let's just run, this should run much quicker now uh, because we're only doing a, a thousand instead of a million. Okay, so that's all done. Let's take a look here. So process people, 81.75 milliseconds, process uh, people yield, 81.55. Uh, so not, you know, not really too much faster, uh, hardly at all, it's very negligible. And then you look at the memory allocated, you still save a, a little bit on memory, but you know, these aren't, very vastly different numbers, right? They're, they're very similar. Uh, but keep in mind, when you do use the yield, uh, you are creating an iterator class, right? So it just depends on your use case. You're not always necessarily going to benefit uh, from using yield from performance or memory necessarily if you have small, small collections you're working with, right? Uh, anyways, I, I really hope this helps you understand what the yield is used for and how it kind of works, right? It's it's a lazy iterator, right? You're, you're lazily creating things. You're lazily asking for things. You're only asking for them when you need them, at the moment you need them. You're not creating them all up front and then giving the whole shebang to you all at once, right? If you haven't already, now's a great time to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and I'll leave a comment below on what you think about the yield and if you think that your applications can benefit from using it. All right, everyone, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.